Today we're speaking about Lexio Divina in this 25th I Thirst follow-up. We'll start in nomine Patris et Filii et Spiritus Sancti. Amen. Lexio Divina is translated as divine reading. So Lexio is reading, Divina is divine. It's called divine reading because when we read the sacred scriptures, we are becoming like God. This is the powerful thing of the practice of the monks. When they did Lexio Divina, they were transformed and raised to the heights of holiness. And so we see that when we read sacred scriptures, just as St. Norbert said, that we can be cleansed of our sins if we read it with love. And this is a very powerful thing. The sacred scriptures are like a fire. When we read them and take them into our soul, it is a raging, beautiful, burning fire of charity that can purify our faults. And so reading sacred scripture is so transformative if we take it into our souls and we take it into our minds, into our hearts, and really are purified to the depths of our being. So Lexio Divina has couple steps. So basically what you're doing is first you're going to read. That's the Lexio part. So you're going to read it and you're not going to read that much. You're going to read perhaps a paragraph, maybe five sentences, perhaps even up to ten sentences. You're not reading for quantity in Lexio Divina. The whole purpose of Lexio Divina is to really converse with God and to be with God and to love God by having the sacred scriptures. So for example, God so loved the world that he sent his only son, right? You can just actually use one verse for Lexio Divina. You can do it for 30 minutes. And so here doing Lexio Divina, you would just have that one verse or, you know, you would have, for example, the Last Supper. You would just read the words of institution. This is my body. Here, if you want to read the crucifixion account, here you can read that. But just remember, keep it small. So here you have a little chunk of sacred scripture, right? Then you're going to chew on it, right? If you take too big a bite of sacred scripture, you're not going to be able to digest it whatsoever, right? You can't eat the entire elephant, right? You have to eat it piece by piece by piece by piece. So here, when you're doing the Lexio, you got to take a little bite and when you take that little bite, then you have to start to chew it. So this is the actual language that the monks used. So you chew that beautiful piece of sacred scripture that you have read. Then you start to taste all of it, all the flavors. And this takes time. You can't just, you know, swallow it like a pill, right? You've got to take it in, chew it. It's going to be a little bit hard to chew, right? There's going to be some difficulties in it. You suck out the flavor, right? And you keep it in your mouth and you have to ruminate on it. And so here, this is the beautiful part of meditatio. Meditation is when you're really kind of chewing on that sacred scripture. If you're thinking, for example, there was a woman in the sky, right? In the book of Revelation, she was crowned with 12 stars, with the moon under her feet and the sun behind her, right? You're thinking about these beautiful words of Our Lady. You're thinking, why does she have the moon under her feet? Why does she have a crown of 12 stars? Why is the sun brilliant behind her? And then why is she in labor pains? This is a really interesting question. And so in Lexio Divina, you're met with all of these different questions. You're chewing on it. You're seeing how beautiful the text is. And then you're asking yourself, you know, why is she in labor pains? Mary never had labor pains because she was the Immaculate Conception. And so then, right, you're praying about this. Jesus, help me to see why Mary has labor pains and then you'll realize well because she is there at the foot of the cross and there she's giving birth to all of the children of the church and so this means that she is suffering there and so when you're thinking about this you're thinking about how our lady suffered at the foot of the cross so she's having those pains 
uh, not from her virgin birth, right, but from giving birth to us because we are so sinful. We are problem children. And so here we cause her so much grief. There are so many swords that we place into her immaculate heart because of our sins. And so she's suffering there at the foot of the cross in union with her son so that she is making reparation for our sins. And so here you're ruminating on these beautiful things and you're ruminating on all these different questions. And then you go into the next stage, which is contemplation. And contemplation is when you just gaze upon the truth and you basically, you swallow everything. And then you're just there enjoying the beautiful text. You don't have to think anymore. You don't have to suck out the flavor anymore, right? You just enjoy the whole experience in one blast. And you think, for example, Mary, I love you for suffering for me at the foot of the cross. Thank you for suffering for me, I who am a wayward child, right? And you're just there with her. You're just there enjoying her company, loving her, and you just sit there with Our Lady. And here the Lexio then becomes contemplation. And it is here that we're really raised up. And you can speak to Mary, you can say thank you, you can love her, ask her for help, you know, but really the whole thing is you're there with her. As soon as our imagination starts, you know, kind of going crazy and distracted and we're starting to get kind of dry in our heart, a little bored because of our weakness, because we can't think about holy things for a long time because we're not used to it. So we kind of go back into our old human nature. So we kind of go down from contemplation. Then what do we do? We go back to chewing. We take another bite, right? And then once again, try to chew, ask questions about the text and really suck out the flavor. And once again, ruminate and chew. And then swallow and then enjoy the beautiful truth. Be there with God, be there with Our Lady. Love the fact that Jesus is saying, you know, basically, I love you on the cross, right, for us. And then you're just there. When your period of 30 minutes is done for Alexio, then you make a resolution. You say, Jesus, I promise to be nice to this friend, or I promise to be nice to my parents, or be nice to my children. I will do this act of charity, whatever it is, for my wife, you know, whatever it is. And so that your Lexio has a beautiful fruit that comes out of it. And so here in Lexio Divina, the whole purpose of it is union of your heart with God through the truth of the gospel and the truth of the scriptures. But again, you're uniting yourself with God in that beautiful divine reading. And so this is why it's called a divine reading because it really divinizes you. If you're becoming one with God, you're becoming like him. And so this is the power of Lexio Divina. This is why, for example, the Norbertines were required to do Lexio Divina as seminarians and here as priests. You know, it's such a beautiful and good idea because it nourishes our priesthood. And for anybody, it really helps them to be a saint. And so here, we really have to bring this practice back of Lexio Divina. It really stops you cold in your tracks. You have to be there with Jesus. You have to be very, very, very attentive to what you're reading. And then your affections, that is all your emotions, you consecrate to God. And then you give your heart to Jesus. And there is the beauty of Lexio Divina.